Yama, I'm Jack, and this is Newsbreak. The EU has just enforced a new ban on glitter. It's all part of a bigger move to crack down on microplastic waste. Here's Joe. Where are you? This is kind of what it feels like to be glitter in the EU right now. Yeah, the <laughs> EU are rounding up and getting rid of this tiny, shiny menace. See, earlier this week, the European Union started pulling glitter from shop shelves as part of their REACH regulations that aim to reduce microplastic pollution by 30% by 2030. The ban includes loose glitter and products that have glitter added to it, like makeup or nail polish. But it also includes all plastic particles smaller than 5 millimetres that can be found in things like body scrubs. And new regulations on these tiny little pellets of plastic, also called nurdles. They're used to make all kinds of plastic products. They're so small they can easily spill into the environment and waterways where they can break down and become even smaller, causing animals and humans to accidentally consume them, which can cause some pretty serious health problems. In fact, there's estimated to be around 2 million tonnes of microplastic in the ocean. But the EU reckons that their new measures will curb that by around half a million tonnes. But not all glitter is being dragged away. Biodegradable glitter will still be allowed. So the sparkle will live on. <laughs> please, please let me out. I'm biodegradable, OK? I promise. Fresh off its first ever successful robotic landing on the moon, India now wants to send an astronaut to the lunar surface. The Indian Space Research Organization says it hopes to get someone up there by 2040. It's not the only country with the moon in its sights. The US is set to send astronauts to the moon in 2025, and China is also hoping to get people there by the end of the decade. High school students from Western Australia are helping to dig up some very special fossils from a creature that went extinct 30,000 years ago. Here's Thomas. Here in the Pilbara, these budding paleontologists are part of a very exciting discovery. We like digging and that's how I got this uh, vertebrae of a wombat, big wombat megafauna thing. This is the big wombat megafauna thing he's talking about. The Diprotodon. It was a relative of wombats and koalas and the biggest marsupial that ever existed. They were as big as three tons and as high as two metres tall. They were a, a herbivores roaming the land uh, in herds. There's a lot that we still don't know about them, but scientists think these fossils they're uncovering could help change that. By studying them in the fields here, taking them back to the museum, having researchers, experts to come and look at those bones, we'll be able to uncover more about this, uh, this land and how they lived in the past. The dig team don't want to just discover these amazing skeletons though, they want to preserve them. See, as fossils like this become exposed from floods, it's important to remove them from the ground quickly so they don't get damaged. And for these students, it's certainly an amazing glimpse at an incredible prehistoric creature. Being able to see actual fossils like in real life and digging them up is amazing. I'm holding something that's probably like 100,000 years old. That's weird as, but I, you know, it's cool. Now it's time for everyone's favourite news segment, Boom Snooze Pair. Are we sure that's everyone's favourite news segment? I've never heard of it. Residents in Melbourne's northeast reported hearing a mysterious loud boom last night. It happened around 9pm and was accompanied by a flash of light. While it's still unknown where the sound came from, residents are speculating it could have been a meteorite. Good news for you snoozers out there. According to new research, it's been scientifically proven that you won't make your day any worse by hitting the snooze button on your alarm. The study found that 30 extra minutes of snoozing either improved or did not affect performance on cognitive tests when compared to waking up immediately. It also found that snoozing might actually help with morning drowsiness. And new data shows that pears have become the forgotten fruit and aren't considered a fruit bowl staple for Aussies anymore. Research says only 59% of households purchase pears on average every four weeks, compared to 93% of shoppers who buy bananas and 84% who buy apples. As a result, about 10% of Australia's pear trees have now been uprooted, with growers saying they're not going to persist with the once popular fruit. Well, that's all we've got for you. We'll be back tomorrow with another edition of Boom Snooze Pear. Or perhaps just regular news. There's always regular news. Bye.